listen to this track, bitch. Damn, son, where'd you find this? I've been having a cool little week. Uh, I ran into my mom's ex-boyfriend the other day. Yeah, he's doing really good, man. He, uh, he was right. We, we were holding him back. He dresses so much nicer. He got a car now. I approached him. I had to. I said, dude, if this is what getting away from my mom looks like, I'm ready, bro. That's the one dude that broke up with my mom. Every dude she dated, she would dump them. But I remember the day he broke up with her. I was 10 years old. He's walking out the house. I was like, he is going places. <laughs> It sucks, it sucks to be short, you know? I can't even go to the bar like everybody else, man. If I'm at the bar and I get bumped into, I just get bumped into, end of story. <laughs> I was at the bar with my girl the other night. I was holding my drink, some dude bumped into me, I spilled some of it, I turned around all swallows. I was like, man, who the fuck? That guy's in a rush. <laughs> My girl was like, he spilled your drink. Aren't you going to say something? I was like, bitch, alcohol is bad for you. <laughs> I need to stop anyway. Why is it that when a man dies, we bury him in the suit? Like, I don't want to be buried in the suit. That's my final rest, not my first interview. <laughs> We're a backwards people for that, man. We're backwards because when babies are born, the first thing we do is wrap them in pajamas and blankets. Life should be the other way around. My final rest should be pajamas, big old tiger blanket. <laughs> and the minute, the minute that babies are born, they should immediately be put in suits because first impressions are everything. <laughs> and I know, I know you're like, that's such a goofy ass silly thought, you know? But it's serious, cause like, all right, just imagine that I brought out two newborn babies right now, twins even. <laughs> One of them in a suit and the other one in pajamas. Which one are you gonna respect more? <laughs> the sleepy bum baby or the 401k baby? Like... <laughs> it is such an honor to be here making my late night debut. Yes. Especially because my grandmother who raised me, she's a huge fan of comedy. If you would have told her that one day I'd be here on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, she probably would have said, because she doesn't know English. <laughs> Texas has not legalized weed. Uh, we've been asking them to, and they just gave us more guns. We legalized <laughs> open carry. We were like, we just want to carry weed. They're like, how about carry a bazooka? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to. It's like, no license needed. I was like, <laughs> That's a, we don't need a license. We just carry guns out in the open. But I, I like California style better. You guys were like, let's make it easier for people to smoke weed. And Texas was like, nah, let's make it easier for people to smoke other people. <laughs> Chicago, man, y'all don't play about your money. There was a homeless dude on the corner playing the saxophone. He had the little box for the tips. I was dancing to the saxophone. But I never tip. <laughs> he stopped playing. He was like, you ain't gonna tip, you ain't gonna dance. <laughs> I'm feeling a little better. I'm feeling sick these last two days. You know, I never know, like, if you should masturbate or not when you're sick. <laughs> Does anybody else wonder that? Like, do you not do it to preserve your energy? Or do you let the toxins out? where I fit in, but I, I really don't. Like, I can't even hang out with my thug friends anymore, because we'll be smoking together, and then they like to say cool thug shit, but it'll also hurt my feelings a lot of the time. <laughs> they get real dramatic when they hit the joint, and be like, man, dog, you know, when I think about it, all my real friends are either dead or in jail by now. I'm like, give me back my weed, man. <laughs> Changing my Hulu password, too. That's for my real friends. 
I got like my suburban friends too, but they're like college kid, preppy type people, very cocky. Like they can never answer questions by saying yes or no. They always gotta say stuff like, you know me, that's weird. <laughs> that is the strangest way to answer a question. Let's talk to my buddy James. I was like, yo James, a couple weeks ago, we were hanging out at that bar and you seemed to hit it off with that one girl and I've been meaning to ask you, uh, did you two go home together? He was like, Ralph, you know me, you know me. <laughs> I was like, dude, she's been missing for like 13 days, man. I don't know you at all. I'm feeling real good, man. I recently moved out from home for the first time ever. Thank you, one person. It's a little apartment, man, but honestly, it's already gone to my head. Like, just saying I have my own place feels like I'm saying, like, I got stocks and bonds now. Like, <laughs> when I walk into places, I walk in like I got options to buy now, you know? Just, I'll be using technical terms when I walk into my friend's house. I'm like, yo, this place got square footage? <laughs> Check your lease, man. My came with square footage, bro. I just, I feel it. I feel like I got it like that now, man. I was at the store. I saw some kids buying chips and candy. I was like, you know what? That's on me today. <laughs> One of the kids was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, it's cool. I got an apartment now. <laughs> I've been trying to show that apartment off to get girls to notice me. Like everywhere I go, I take my lease with me now. <laughs> I just let it hang out the pocket a little bit. Just... Yeah. Yeah, right there. The other day I acted like I accidentally dropped it by a girl at a bar. <laughs> she was like, hey, you dropped this piece of paper. I was like, oh, damn, did I drop my 13-month lease? <laughs> I said, you keep that one. That's, that's you right there. That's you. If I'm being 100% honest, I do want to use the apartment to get girls to notice me, but, man, after that deposit and this one furniture I have... <laughs> I don't really have money left for girls, bro. Like, <laughs> like, I have approached one girl. I approached one girl at the bar. I was like, hey, what's up? What you drinking? And she was like, Crown and Coke. I was like, nice. <laughs> that was as far as I could afford to go. But after a minute, I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, man, I'm gonna just go for it. So I told her, could you buy me one too, please? <laughs> I spend a lot of money on sneakers too. That's, yeah, that's where I get a lot of my confidence is from shoes, you know? Yeah. A fresh pair of Nikes will have me forgetting I'm only 5'7". <laughs> I'll start walking up to tall girls at the bar like, what's up, shorty? <laughs> I'd be like, come here, I have to tell you something. <laughs> I recently became a father, I have a beautiful baby boy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's great, but it's also very scary having a baby at a young age. I feel like I'm a new employee who just got put to train an even newer employee. <laughs> Cause I just look at my son like, I don't, I haven't been here that long, man. I can show you where we eat, that's about it. <laughs> but it is amazing watching him learn things and grow. Like he's walking now, he knows how to ask for food. I was like, dang, I've taught you all I can, son. From here on out, we learn together. 
I like buying them lots of sneakers because I'm big on sneakers. Last month, I went a little crazy. I bought us like eight pairs of shoes, four for me, four for my baby boy. He doesn't fit into a size nine yet, so I wear his half for now, but I kind of want to vote, you know? I kind of do, but like I said, I don't even do research. I just, I just go off of like vibes. <laughs> And I don't like the vibes that Trump and Biden give me. I don't, I don't like their vibes at all, man. Like, they make me feel like America is this one big party, right? Like we're all at this house party. And then somebody at that party was like, okay, I'm gonna introduce you all to these two guys. <laughs> and one guy is like the guy who he gets so drunk, he just says whatever's on the top of his mind. And occasionally it's some racist shit. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> and the other guy they brought out is the guy who like, he's so high, but he tries his best to convince you he's not high. <laughs> but the more he talks, the more you're like, dude, you are stoned. <laughs> they brought out these two guys and they're basically like, all right, like one of these two has to drive you home. <laughs> That's why I don't want to vote. I'm like, I just walk. I just... <laughs> Weird hearing my friends try to flirt with strippers. I'm realizing things. I'm realizing there's only two types of guys that flirt with strippers. There's dudes who flirt through money, just trying to show it off. With strip club, that, that's the place to do it, you know? And then there's dudes who flirt from the heart. Uh, that one is sad. <laughs> If they're flirting from the heart, it's because they ran out of money. <laughs> you ever seen your boy get in a lap dance but just trying way too hard? Like, oh baby, your body's so perfect. You're like a goddess. I swear you could have been a princess. I'll stop my boy. I'll be like, bro, it's too late for her. <laughs> She needed to hear this like in middle school. <laughs> the same what she's here for, go to the ATM, man. <laughs> My friends don't even know how to flirt, man. They just say things that they hear rappers say. They'd be like, you know, I could be the one to save you from all this. I could take you away from it all. I'm like, man, strippers, they're living the life. They don't want to be saved. <laughs> go to the girl who's like the manager at a Marshalls. <laughs> she wants to be saved bad. <laughs> Throw a lot of cash at her, I bet you she'll do more than just touch you. But I like the racism in New York better. You guys aren't born with it, you know? People don't get racist here until you inconvenience everybody else. I saw this dude, he held up the train. Nobody cared about the color of his skin until he held up the train. <laughs> He had his backpack on and his backpack wouldn't let the doors close, but he didn't know it was him, so the doors just kept going, Dino, Dino. Somebody was like, yo, take that fucking sack off or go back to where you came from. <laughs> What's messed up is that it worked. That dude went straight back to Connecticut. <laughs> I, I've always believed in aliens. I've never liked them, but I've always believed in them. You know? People are always like, they're so smart. They come here to observe us. Why do they always crash land then? <laughs> And they're always naked. <laughs> you know, humans, we went to the moon and we got back with clothes on. <laughs> just, and also, why are we just cool with that? They crash land and just destroy our land, destroying our property? They're making me Republican. <laughs> I'm like, we're just gonna let them get away with it? We gotta pay for it, they're not even from here. I don't even think we get the smart aliens. I think the only aliens that have ever come to Earth are like college students. <laughs> I think they're on their planet, a bunch of aliens are just getting drunk. They're like, dude, let's get fucking naked and drive to Earth. <laughs> and then on Sunday morning, they wake up at Area 51 like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> That's why in the pictures, they always look dehydrated. They're hungover.
He's trying to communicate. He's like, PD alive. <laughs> I've been looking to buy some rims for my car. I grew up in like a rim-centric era. Like I was taught that the nicer someone's rims are, the more you respect that person. And that's a code I still live by to this day. Yeah, like if I pull up to a red light with my girl and the car next to us has better rims, I'm like, it's high. Go to him. <laughs> That was number one priority when I was growing up, was getting some nice rims. That was more important than moving out even. <laughs> yeah, you can live at your mom's, but if you had nice rims, people would be like, nah, his mom stays with him. <laughs> That's just a good boy. <laughs> she really found out who I was when she, the minute she walked into my apartment. Cause she walked in and she saw my Nintendo Switch she was like, fuck. I just looked at her like, you know, I didn't hide anything from you. But when you called me, I said I was working on the car. I just never said it was Super Mario's car. <laughs> I don't like that she tried to make fun of my Nintendo. She was throwing little jokes. She was like, can't believe you got a Nintendo. But in my head, I was like, go ahead and say something. Because who's the lame one here? The Nintendo player who just got laid or the girl who just slept with a Nintendo player? <laughs> like, you fucked up, I'm winning. <laughs> she's real pretty, she could have got herself a dude with a PS5, but she didn't, look where she's at. <laughs> I, miss, I miss where I grew up, I like that area. I grew up like right in between a really bad neighborhood and a really nice one. So like I've always understood all the hood lingo but sometimes I'll hear it and like I still don't catch on quite, you know what I mean, it throws me off, I guess because of where I'm at in the area. Like the other day my neighbor was catching up with me, he's like, Ralph, I know you've been hitting some fat licks off these comedy shows, homie. <laughs> Break bread with your kink folk, babies, you know me and you, we go way back like four flats on a Cadillac, cuz. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't like when you talk like that, Kyle. <laughs> I can tell I grew up on the badder side of the area just based off of the relationship advice the older dudes used to give me. Like this older neighbor named Roger, I was just venting one day. I was like, yeah, I don't think it's gonna work out with this girl, man. He's like, you gotta do what I do. When I'm having problems with my girl, I look her right in the face and I say, look, baby, you can do what you do in those streets, but at the end of the day, the streets don't love you like I do. <laughs> I was like, I don't think we're having the same type of... <laughs> relationship problems there. <laughs> like, yeah, I get jealous sometimes, but you, Roger, I think your girlfriend is a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man, I've been feeling good. Sometimes I'll see people like more confident than me, just like, just feeling better, and I don't like that, man. <laughs> man I get mad, I was walking out the grocery store, and this dude was walking in, and before he walked in, without even looking at his car, he pulled out his little key fob and just locked it one time and kept going. I was like, hey, one time. <laughs> like, bro, what kind of carefree life do you live? <laughs> I wanted to break into his car <laughs> so he can learn. You gotta press that like six times at least, man. <laughs> that made me so mad, I pulled out my keys. I started pressing panic. Uh, I started watching CNN. They were doing this special on China. And now I started getting a little offended, right? It, it caught me. The first thing that caught me, 80% of Americans don't trust President Xi Jinping. And I don't think that's true because I don't think 80% of us knew China had a president. <laughs> Called my buddy Pung, cause he's from China. I was like, yo, you guys have a president in China? He says, no. He said, it's more of like a chairman position. I was like, oh, well, I don't trust him. <laughs> and I just kept watching. He said, the biggest threat to our country is the country of China. And that's where I got mad. Because China has not only clothed and fed me for the last 20 something years, <laughs> but after every meal, they give me a little message of inspiration. China's my biggest threat? No. 
I'll believe they're my mom before I believe they're my biggest threat. I gotta be careful though, I'm a type one diabetic. Yeah, that's right, I got the diabetes, yeah. Sometimes people don't believe me when I tell them, and I think it's because I only weigh like a, a buck 35. I'm a skinny dude, yeah. Hearing me say I have diabetes is like saying, like hearing a really ugly dude say he got herpes. You know what I mean? Like people just look at me like, you got it? Like for sure, like a doctor told you, you think you got it. Like, if you didn't like that joke, you're ugly. Yeah. I, I got it when I was six, and I had the same doctor from when I was six to I was 18. That's a long time to have one doctor, so when I left, I thought it'd be nice to leave a review on his website. So who knows him better than me, you know? I was like, this man was my doctor for the last 12 years, and I'm still diabetic. <laughs> one star. I didn't like the nurses at his clinic. They tried to like make me feel better. They thought I was sad. I wasn't until they tried to make me feel better. They would be like, you know, in time, you might even find that diabetes could be like a blessing in disguise. I think I'd rather have just a regular blessing. <laughs> but believe it or not, I try, to use, I try to use that advice years later. My friends are trying to start a fight at a bar. And I, I'm, not, I'm not a fighter. I'm like, maybe I can pull a diabetes card here. You know? This big dude pushed me. And I was just like, hey man, you don't want to do this. I'm diabetic. <laughs> this is one of the downsides to living in America though, is he goes, me too. Bah! I was like, what the fuck, bro? We got to stick together. He was like, nah, two types walked in, one type's walking out. 